Good evening, you are watching the news from the Sultanate of Iman television. First, the headlines. Before calling for a 30-day ceasefire in Syria, tens are killed and injured after airstrikes by Syrian forces in eastern Ghouta. The Belgian Prime Minister hosts EU leaders ahead of a summit. And authors and publishers stress the increasing freedom of publishing at Muscat International Book Fair. Those were the headlines, now the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Sayyid sent a cable of greetings to Her Excellency Kersai Khal Jalaid of Estonia on her country's national day. The UN Security Council will vote on a draft resolution demanding a 30-day ceasefire in Syria to allow for deliveries of humanitarian aid and medical evacuations. A slightly amended text was circulated to council members, but it was unclear whether Russia would support the measure. The Russian ambassador told a council meeting that there was no agreement on a truce and presented a new raft of amendments. Negotiations on the draft have dragged on as hundreds of Syrians have died in a fierce air campaign in the rebel-held enclave of eastern Ghouta. Meanwhile, Syrian and Allied forces pounded the rebel-held enclave of eastern Ghouta for a sixth straight day today, killing at least nine people. Rami Abdul Rahman, the head of the Britain-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, said the airstrikes and artillery fire are continuing on several towns in eastern Ghouta. He said that five of the nine people killed today died in airstrikes on Douma, the main town in the enclave east of Damascus, and that two of them were children. The latest deaths brought to 426 the number of people killed since the Syrian government and its Russian ally intensified their bombardment of the besieged area on February 18th. German Chancellor Angela Merkel and French President Emmanuel Macron attended a meeting of 12 European Union leaders hosted by Belgian Prime Minister Charles Michel. Leaders from Bulgaria, Finland, Ireland, Italy, Luxembourg, Poland, Portugal, Slovakia and Spain also attended the meeting held in the outskirts of Brussels. European Union leaders, except Britain's Theresa May, will lay down the first markers today on the size and aims of the bloc's next long-term budget as a large hole in its finances begins to take shape with next year's departure of one of its main net contributors. The 27 remaining EU leaders are to say if they agree to increase the 2021-2027 budget to pay for new common policies on security, defence and migration, even though Britain's exit will slash revenues to the common pot by 10 to 12 billion euros per year. Five people are dead and 18 missing after a landslide on the Indonesian island of Java engulfed farmers working in their rice paddles. Hundreds of rescuers, including soldiers and villagers, used their bare hands and farm tools to search for victims buried beneath tons of mud and soil. The National Disaster Mitigation Agency said 14 people from the affected hamlet in central Java's Brebus district were hospitalised with injuries. Survivors described a sudden roar as the side of a hill collapsed and swept trees and everything else in its path towards the terrace rice fields below. The search and rescue team was having difficulty finding victims because of the unstable muddy conditions and width of the landslide. Heavy equipment cannot be used, he said. The local disaster official Eco Andalas said the landslide, which started in surrounding hills that are part of a forestry plantation, was triggered by torrential rains. Still to come in our news bulletin. Southern parts of Italy resisted the economic crisis by promoting culture and tourism. Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Iman Television. 
the 23rd edition of the annual Muscat International Book Fair started witnessing large numbers of visitors. More details in the following report by Abdullah bin Ahmed al Ribai. With more than 500,000 titles uh, represented by 878 publishers from 28 nations, the 23rd edition of the annual Muscat International Book Fair had entered its third day at Oman uh, Convention and Exhibition Center. The convergence of titles and authors from across the country and other GCC countries is seen drawing wide interest from children and adults alike. Good evening. I came here to the book uh, exhibition and I have been searching for a specific book and Alhamdulillah I managed to get that book. I came with my family to uh, get uh, to looking for uh, books and we, we got I was searching of a book and I got it's a very nice book fair. Actually, I was waiting since long time to look for some books. And uh, the one uh, we were looking for my kids, she got it. And the one I am looking for is still I have to spare some time to search for it. And I hope it's available here. I came to buy these books, which will help me to, uh, for my studies. Very happy. My name is Hussain. OK. Did you buy, how old are you? I am eight. You're eight. Did you buy books there? Yeah. I bought superheroes books and I will read it with my brother. I got the book. I'm so happy to make all magics. And I have the slime and two slimes. And everything I have is nice. We had an opportunity to meet with the author here. He's one of them from Saudi Arabia. I'm very glad to be here uh, in this book fair. And uh, actually, for the uh, last 15 years, I did not visit uh, Omanese uh, book fair. And uh, today I came here to sign my new book that uh, titled Inni Ashimu Bakhuran. The fair, which ends on March 3rd, gives an Arab and foreign publishing houses an opportunity to introduce institutions and market their publications. It's worth mentioning that a number of authors and publishers stress that freedom of publishing at Muscat International Book Fair on its 23rd round is high. Some of them saw that withdrawal of one or two books from the fair is not affecting this provided space, which is considered an intellectual right for readers with their various orientations. Abdullah bin Ahmed al Rubai, Sultanate of Oman Television, Masqat. The Oman oil price April 2018 delivery reached 63 US dollars and 27 cents. Dubai Mercantile Exchange said that the price of Oman oil declined $1.36 from the price of yesterday, Wednesday, which was $61.91. The average price of Oman oil March 2018 delivery has reached $66.32, thus $4.75 per barrel higher than the February 2018 delivery. The Arab League Against Rheumatism was organized by the Oman Society of Rheumatology in collaboration with Oman Medical Association. More details in the following report by Abdullah bin Ahmed al Rabai. With the aim of promoting rheumatology health by providing a comprehensive update on the core topics in rheumatology and sharing expertise in the Arab countries, the Oman Society of Rheumatology, OSR, in collaborations with the Arab League Against Rheumatism, have organized a three-day conference. Dr. Hamed Al-Wahshi, President of Arab League Against Rheumatism and President of Oman Society of Rheumatology, said... Uh, Arab League Against Traumatism uh, Congress is held every two years from the 90s uh, when it has been first uh, formed as uh, Ban Arab uh, Rheumatology Con Congress. And uh, we bid for it in uh, 2014 to have it this year with us and we got the approval from uh, Arab societies to give us the chance to organize it this year. And we uh, put it to be coincide, uh, to coincide with uh, our Oman Society of Rheumatology first meeting. And uh, we tried to put promoting rheumatology research in the Arab world because of the lack of research in the Arab world compared to the basically the uh, Europe, uh, North America and uh, the Asian uh, uh, side. 
Through the sessions organized and the time incorporated for networking, delegates will have an ample opportunities to learn new and exciting developments with the leading world rheumatology expert the Arab expert. world. Abdullah bin Ahmed al rubai Sultanate of Oman Television, Muscat. Spreading the culture of practicing sports among society for its health and mental importance, the Walk Day event was inaugurated in the Walaya of Mazira in the Governorate of South Shakia, which came within the campaign of Check One Day, You Be Always Safe. The event is organized by the Directorate General for Health Services in the Governorate. The event focused on awareness in health aspects for instilling a spirit of activity among individuals and to introduce them to a healthy, nutritious lifestyle. The event was presided over by His Excellency Sheikh Talal bin Saif Al Hosni, Wali of Mazira. A tough water-saving regime and the generosity of farmers have given South Africa's main tourist hub welcome respite from a severe drought and helped push back a dreaded day zero when Cape Town's taps are expected to run dry. On Tuesday, the city of 4 million moved its estimate for day zero to July 9th from June 4th due to a decline in water usage and after the Grown Land Farmers Association also released 10 billion litres of water from their private reservoirs into the Steambrus storage dam. At the moment, restrictions make it compulsory for residents to use no more than 50 litres per person per day. To ease the pressure, a local businessman opened an eco-friendly car wash which trades water for an eco-friendly chemical that can remove dirt. Amid the crisis, the city is currently drilling into an aquifer near the dry, the, the, low, the water scoof dam that will supplement the needs of residents. Ahead of the Italian election, former leftist Prime Minister Matteo Renzi is pushing the idea of driving economic development through culture and tourism. And that is how southern Italy, long considered the country's economic weak link, is now challenging the powerful north. Here is a report. Final preparations for the reopening of this manor farm in the southern Italian region of Puglia, a hugely popular tourist destination, which every summer is crammed with holidaymakers. Owners Teo and Patricia bought the farm 15 years ago, at a time when tourism in the area was only beginning to develop. Growth in the sector was helped by European funds, as well as the support of left-leaning administrations. Compared to other Italian regions, Puglia has drawn a lot on resources from Europe. All the structures here, which are mostly old homes, have benefited from financial aid from the Italian state and especially the European Union, because the south is considered a less developed area. Economic development through culture and tourism is one of the key pillars of Democratic Party leader Matteo Renzi's campaign. In power, his centre-left government invested three billion euros in this sector, with a large portion going to the south, and it intends to continue that policy if it comes out on top in the March 4th poll. Another symbol of southern renewal is Matera in the Basilicata region, which will be the European capital of culture in 2019. We could dress up the city in a European costume, but if we don't also give it the economic power that allows it to truly wear the outfit, that costume will slowly shrink. So we're working to make Matera a laboratory for new technologies. The city, which was the backdrop to Mel Gibson's The Passion of Christ, will be one of the first in Italy to see 5G mobile internet. However, local people expect more from any future government, in particular infrastructure development. Matera is not connected to Italy's national rail network, and Basilicata doesn't have a single airport. Now for the general weather forecast. Clear skies will prevail over the Sultanate with chances of low clouds and fog late at night over the governorates of Al Dahira and Al Baremi. Winds will be northerly to northwesterly, light to moderate. Seas will be moderate to rough with a maximum wave height of 2.5 metres.
Tonight is this alternate of Iman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. Before calling for a 30-day ceasefire in Syria, tens are killed and injured after airstrikes by Syrian forces in eastern Ghouta. The Belgian Prime Minister hosts EU leaders ahead of a summit. And authors and publishers stress the increasing freedom of publishing at Muscat International Book Fair. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsroom and the studios, it's good night.